If they need space to work, give them a bit of space. No, 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 this is my living space. So you're going to block me out my door? I'm making sure my colleagues are safe. Yep, they're yeah, safe. Choice. But if, if they're not safe, why are they here? You jumped in my house. Yep. Now you're not letting me go in my door. No, 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 no. They touch my phone, eh? Take the light off my phone. They touch my phone, eh? Okay. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to go see if my little brother in there. No, you're not. No, yeah, I am. That's my little brother in there. Okay. I'm going to see if he's safe, actually. You're not. No, yeah, I am. Okay, I'm going to warn you for obstruction. No, 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 no. Okay. They're all in there. There's no obstruction. For your safety, for the officer's safety, yep, for my brother's safety too. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Okay, so like some people from being so over in the Bay of Kenti, they uh, said that they had some, they're sending me some information um, that they got apparently death threats for. And what was that guy's name just before they called both of us and said that he had all those statutes that had to be completely destroyed and he said that he had received death threats who's giving the death threats apparently government and police and then son said that he got told by the police if he was found on anyone else's property at night they would shoot to kill him okay i believe shan's story but with Shan, the yeah, yeah. yeah with the other people why were they showing government people or the police they weren't showing them, they were showing other people and they had got told not to do that. Who by? Um, government people. We're assuming it's government people. No, one of them told me differently. And that uh, Daniel, he didn't seem not genuine. Yeah, maybe we, we shouldn't be saying their first and last names. So I'll have to edit that out, Peter. Um, well, if people are getting death threats and they're, still, and they're still alive to tell the story and they're still holding on to the items, wouldn't it make more sense that the people would have just taken the items off them? Yeah. I mean, and if you get a death threat, that's like giving someone a heads up. So they've whoever gave the death threat exposes themselves as being the villain so now the people who apparently were given the death threats know exactly who those villains are and why aren't they exposing those people are they government people or are they people just at the marae or people on the trust boards well, who the fuck knows what's going on but like uh, i guess at the moment people want to be dramatic i mean because well, I, I think it's too late in the day for threatening people with death over fucking documents. Yeah, because we already, it's, it's a clear, out. it's a clear it's cut out. thing, you know. Hey, New Zealand yeah. government is corrupt, we all know that, like. Yeah, the, the out of the bag, but I, I, it's a, it could be the fear phenomenon where people, like I had it a little bit, like when I first started, I was kind of, yeah. you know, overly you know, since, yeah, like, and I thought, you know, similar kind of things, but now that we're fully entrenched in this. That no one's ever done it before, you know what I mean? And that, that they're fucking really risking themselves. They, I think yeah. to some degree they are, and people should be mindful of who they entrust. Yeah, well, I mean, like, okay, so um, the fucking police have been fucking, yeah, doing that thing that you saw on the video, right? Okay, explain it, they, explain it for the viewers. Okay, so they came around looking for somebody. So eight police looking, came around at 11.30 on a Saturday night. Um, they're, looking, they're looking for a guy, and what are they looking for him for? Not turning up to court when he rang up 
but his original charge was obstruction because he spoke out, out about them arresting me. Okay, so bogus charges, um, they're just coming they around, come around eight police. Around, yeah, they came around and they fucked over his son they, and tried to charge him with obstruction. So I'll edit the, the video of the son, quite placid, 22 years old, never been in trouble before, um, just talking to the police when um, it was <laughs> like... He wanted to check on his mother out of concern, love and concern. He wanted to check on his little brother who was inside and um, almost on cue with probably like on cue with some kind of signal, eight police jumped this young Maori... Right. It was nothing, and you saw it. It all looked like nothing was happening, and then all of a sudden they just jumped on him. Yeah, and they broke his arm. Well, they dislocated it. Hey, this kid has never been in trouble before. He's a mouldy yeah. boy. He's got a job. It's like Saturday night, 11 o'clock. He's, he's not going to be working now. He's at home playing video games when eight cops turn up and jump him and break his arm. Yeah. You know, yeah, if that's not systemic racism or targeting, police targeting. They were all white Can you speak up a bit? That was that was that sound that's starting again. No, it's not. You're just terrible. Put your mouth to the phone, Peter. Listen, Monica, something happens to the phone. No. Right. It's perfectly clear now. Okay, keep speaking. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, and eight officers came to the door. And um, he was doing nothing. He's done nothing wrong. He was playing um, video games. Yeah, and he came into the house. We tried to come into the house, and they said, "If you come in, we'll try and do you. For, we'll do you for obstruction." So he stopped, and he goes, "Well, I'm going to my room then." And they said, "No, you're not going to your room." So he started recording them with his phone, and you've got the video of that. And then, without warning, they just like surprise turned on him and jumped on him. And broke his arm and um, luckily Peter was there and the, they took the kid's phone they broke it but Peter was able to salvage yeah, the video they stomped, they stomped all over it man. yeah they so it. Peter being the tech nerd that he is salvaged the, the video and sent it to me so we'll pop that well, on I just got onto the phone while it was broken and it was still on there I was able to get onto Facebook and just send the video straight to his dad yeah, I've just had another guy call me up today, Pete. He had 11 police um, come around and just basically harass him and his little daughter. You know, yep. never been in trouble before. Um, you know, hardworking guy. Um, they've brought on like three bogus charges against him. You know, 11 police, like, come on. Like, it's targeting. They're targeting. They don't say, yeah, they are. Certain people. Yeah. So he was Takutina as well. Oh. He's okay. Kamatea Araki Nui's Mokopono as well. So he's like a cousin of mine, a distant cousin. And yeah. um, I'm starting to see a real pattern, Pete. Oh. They're trying to get rid of all the people that can um, sway other people. Yeah. Yeah, but there's like 60,000 of us cousins. Like, they can't kill us all. No, and every time they get rid of one, that means another one becomes the one. Yeah, but like literally there's 60,000 Kahanunu cousins, 60,000 Napahui cousins, um, then you've got all the Tauranga, like um, Ngāti Pro, Tūwhari Toa, like it's like there's so many of us, they can't literally just target all of us. They just single us out and, you know, target us that way. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That the noise is starting again. Uh, it is not Peter. Anyway, did you get that? Uh, just sing it, Cole. Tell it, tell it. Yeah, yeah. It does. It does happen. Uh, you know, for some reason it happens. What's the noise like, Cole? It, and it just makes like a static noise. Do you think it's all your equipment? All your drone equipment? It's like jamming. No, no, it's jamming. It's something else. It does it only when I'm starting to talk about sensitive things to do with the police and that. <clears throat> can you send me Kyle's video so I can construct something now in case something happens? Yeah. 
like get some kind of a time um, stamp. It's sending it to me now, and I'm going to download it and send it. To yeah, you and video it. that kid, or you know, even yeah, just I'll... audio Kyle talking about the event, so that we've got it fresh for the evidence. Yeah. One, two, three, four. We're just going to make sure he's not home and then we'll be on our way, okay? Yeah, on me. Can I, can I see the warrant? I'll show you afterwards. Yep, right. see this. Come, come in here and hang out with me, young man. No, 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 no. This is my house, see. This is yeah, my that's, house. That's fine, but just give them a bit no, of space. No, 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 yep. Yeah. You give me space. You, you're in my space, actually. They need space to work. Give them a bit of space. No, no, no. This is my living space. So you're going to block me out my door? I'm making sure my colleagues are safe. Yep, they're yeah, safe. Choice. But if, if they're not safe, why are they here? You jumped in my house. Yep. Now you're not letting me go in my door. No, 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 no. They touch my phone, eh? Take the light off my phone. They touch my phone, eh? Okay. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to go see if my little brother in there. No, you're not. No, yeah, I am. That's my little brother in there. Okay. I'm going to see if he's safe, actually. You're not. No, yeah, I am. Okay, I'm going to warn you for obstruction. No, 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 no. Okay. They're all in there. There's no obstruction. Yeah. For your safety, for the officer's safety, yep. Yeah. For my brother's safety, too. No one's doing anything wrong here. Those people are not here. Okay. 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 Hey, 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 what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? I saw that. What are you doing? Stop hurting him. What for? Break my arm, break. What for? What are you doing to him? I'll hold him on my face. Where's your face? Just leave. What the hell are you doing? I saw that he tried to freaking rest tackled him. What for? Yeah, fucking Sorry. actual faggots. Just go in there. No. Go in there. Hey, hey Matthias. I'm it's not the Matthias. Can you show me? They just arrested a young kid, and they were about to arrest this young kid again. No, fucking piece of shits. Room. All of you. Just leave him. Go in there. That's my son's room. I don't know where he is, sorry. Okay, that's fine. You can uh, let him know that. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Has a reason. Sure. He can go into the court and make yeah, a sure. uh, volunteer appearance. Sure. Sure. Right. He's tried to sort it out over the phone and then and he's tried to go in there, he's been turned away. Right. Okay, hey, that's, he'll just, has he got a word? Yeah. Just get him to contact them. Yeah. Hey, do you need to get your bail address changed, okay? I am not looking for this. They literally just freaking arrested him and he just stood there. He just stood there and they literally just arrested him. He didn't even do anything. He literally didn't do anything. And you just arrested him for no reason. You just freaking surprised attacked him and assault. What the fuck, bro? They were having a 21st party. Okay, hang on. Out. Wait, I'll just introduce it because that makes no sense to the story. Okay. Well, the, you're talking about the body get his broken neck. Shush. I'm going to just intro you, okay? So, basically, um, on Saturday night, so the 8th of, was it last night? Last night, yes. Okay, so on the 8th of January 2022, um, Peter was hanging out with his mates, they were playing video games, and um, eight cops came around, didn't find a supposed person who was supposed to be at the house, um, and then just jumped on this 22-year-old innocent mouldy boy, never been in trouble before, broke his arm or dislocated it. But yeah. the reason why... 
this is starting to look like complete targeting is because um, Peter's mate, who wasn't at the house, he was out. Um, was it his younger son? Um, no, the older one, older than those two. He's just a little bit older. They're all pretty close in age, right, ranging from 16 to about 23. Okay, so the one that had... Oh, there's so many. How old was the one with the broken arm? Uh, 22. How old was the one with the fucking broken neck? 23. Okay, so how many months ago did this happen? Um, this happened at the 22-year-old's 21st birthday. Okay, so when? <laughs> Um, six months ago, six days ago, when? A year ago now. Okay, so a year before this incident on the 8th of January 2022, where the eight cops came around and um, basically attacked, jumped on a 22-year-old innocent Māori boy, roughly a year prior to that, um, the 22-year-old's older brother, who's 23, um, had his neck broken by the police. So Peter's going to explain that story. Okay, so uh, the 22-year-olds are uh, twins, and they were out on a birthday party on their 21st birthday. And um, they'd hired a room at the pub, and um, the, everything was fine, and then the pub staff um, got upset uh, with some of the members of the family and called the police and then the police came down and they said they were doing a just a routine walkthrough, there was no incident report and um, they beat up the father and the oldest boy and they, they put the oldest boy in hospital and broke basically broke his neck and they tried to do the same thing to the father okay so there's a court case about that so in the one household, you've got the father being um, arbitrarily arrested. Um, Harassed, um, beaten. Oh, for bogus charges, H hasn't done anything wrong. Yep. Then you've the got, how many son? police were involved in the breaking of his oldest son's neck? Oh, about the same amount. Yeah, about okay. 10, 10 police. And then the interesting correlation to the event last night in January, just like on the 8th of January, was that a few days prior, um, the father of the, of the boys um, lodged a, um, a case against the police for the breaking of his oldest boy's neck. So that was just, just a few days before, right? Yeah, they, all, they came around on their birthday again too, to arrest them. Okay, so the first incident happened on the twins' birthday um the second incident happened on the twins birthday okay um and how often do the cops come around to this this family's home um well i've been they've been around there okay so the time they came around and arrested me is one of the times they came there and they said they were looking for a dog and then that diffused into looking for the oldest son which then turned into, oh, we're arresting you. Yeah, how many times um, you, you casually just visit and play video games with these guys? So you're just casually there playing video yeah. games. How many times have the police been uh, around? Four. Four times? Four. For bogus... Four since, I've, since I've been going there, they've been around four times when I've been there. Can you remember with Kat Tanuhi, um last year, um, a yeah. policeman you know, saw her walking on the street and fucking bashed her. Yeah, that's right. I do remember that too, yeah. Um, and even the judge, when um, Kat went to court, the judge was asking, what actually happened there? Did the police officer get in trouble? Yes, I do believe so. Yeah, the judge um, frowned upon it. Kat is tiny. Yeah. She's like size four. Yeah, the, the judge in that, the court couldn't understand what was going on. So Kat was targeted, um, yeah. and your friend's sons have been definitely targeted. Um, yeah, and, and there are similar people doing similar things who are actually standing up against the police and telling them, no, you can't just do this stuff. The other um, thing about 
the guys who are getting targeted, um, they're very much into their whakapapa. So they've got a lot of um, ancestral knowledge um, as a family hapu group about the whakapapas of, um, you know, that are like, it just seems quite um, interesting that certain people continuously get targeted. Yeah, the same groups of families. It's not, it's not interesting. It's actually part of the systemic racism. Yeah, yeah. Because we had that incident with the Waikato um, corrections when Kat was um, given experimental... She was given, what was it? Like gift certificates and time of her PD for a bogus charge if she conducted... Um, flashing um, light experiments that yeah, gave her a seizure med medical medical experiment yeah in the army. she said that um it was for days and she had to look at a screen and there was lots of flashing and she had a seizure afterwards and crashed her car yeah so there's some pretty weird shit going on so i don't know yeah and she also mentioned they were all moldy and they were all offered time off their pd and yeah. um gift vouchers to do this flashing light test. Medical thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to put the relevant legislation up on this video as well. So if anyone else has experienced this, they can um, um, read the, like, um, applicable legislation and then you just use those acts in court against the police. Yep. Yeah, and try and get video footage. If you see anything like this happening with like m big numbers of police attacking innocent, mouldy... Um, record it, record it and send it to us. Yeah, record it, send it to us so we can highlight this issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, darling, I'm going to now um, work on the video tonight. Yeah, I'll and send you Kyle's one. It's just taking a while because it's a pain in the ass with my phone. Don't do it on your phone, retard. Do it to That's the... Not, listen. You've got a USB cord. Put it to your fucking computer. Your phone is shit. Do not trust it. Okay, I'm going to go. Listen. Bye. Yep. Okay, ready? Go. Yep. Hello, my name's Christopher. Um, I would just like to... I don't know how you said, like, advise on what's happened to me over the last few months yep. by the New Zealand government and the police and um yeah it all started on october when um the mother of my children rang the police to say that i was growing marijuana which she knew was not illegal under our temawana new year kiwa rights and customary and inherent right situation yeah, yeah right yeah and um she used the police to raid my house, damage my property, confiscate all my belongings and physically harm me to keep, um, to keep access of my children, which we had an agreement to that I have, you know, constant visitation rights and communication rights with. And yeah, she knew that the only way to prevent me from being around my children was to have me arrested under the New Zealand police rules, which they um, have been advised that I, they don't have jurisdiction over me. Yeah, okay, so yeah. it wasn't just the cannabis, eh? They're trying to bring on some other fake charges? Um, after the cannabis said that I said we they had no jurisdiction and I know it's not illegal, that's when they said they received the call two weeks earlier to say that I had threatened to kill my ex-partner and I had firearms, which I never, when they had raided my house, they found a slug gun. Yeah. which I know is not illegal and unlawful. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. I, I bought a slug gun. Like, everyone's got slug guns. Like, you can just buy them from the shop. Yeah, yeah, and what's <laughs> worse is we're in a high um, risk. My, my house has been home invaded four or five times by gang members and three times by the New Zealand police unlawfully. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that was my form of... Okay, so they tried to do you with... Um, fake charges on cannabis and fake charges of um firearms so this is just um 
quite a common thing so I'm just going to like um, um, go into detail about how to defend yourself okay well first of all we don't call um, cannabis cannabis we call it rungawa <laughs> so we've yeah. got the you know your te moana nui akiwa diplomatic community c pass card um, is also effectively a um, rungawa um, medicinal herbal, oh, med herbal medicinal um, permit because it's not unlawful to even grow cannabis you just need a permit and so as a um, native authority we've just agreed that you know that your C pass is a permit. So, um, also in terms of firearms, that's not our words; that's their legalese word. And um, we're allowed to have guns. We're allowed to have property because um, our, when our tupuna were um, trading land titles for um, for property, they they used guns. So, um, and I think um, the equivalent to one gun and a bunch of um, like supplies like flour and sugar was what the pre-treaty um, 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 trade was for the entire Auckland. So the entire Auckland area was traded for one gun. Okay, so, you know, you could say, oh, yeah, you can have the gun, but, yeah, I'll just take the entire Auckland area back, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, like, because, you know. Yeah, that's a fair trade. They that's a fair trade, hey. Hey, and this country was built on guns, trade, and, um, like, confiscation of land or, you know, um, trading for land titles. So, I mean, if they really want to get petty and start like basically um, coming down hard on every like high p population um, Maori and Pacific Islander areas like South Auckland I mean if they want to continuously target our people our people can you know start putting in claims against them so um the threaten to kill is hearsay. I mean, if she, if you did threaten to kill, my defence would be, um, why didn't she say it at the time? Why wait months what, what after? What really got me was um, after they raided my house, they did all that. I was arrested and standing there waiting to be taken to the south. Then they came out and said they received a call two weeks earlier to say that I had threatened to kill Patricia with a firearm, which... I know for a fact that they should have been here on the day their call was made. Yeah. It was so important, but yeah, they were just making up things because I had already said to them, um, you know, marijuana is out on the way and it's not illegal. Yeah. And I never had a firearm, which they keep saying I, my slug gun was a firearm and yeah. um, it was safe, you know. I never even wielded it or made threats that they were just trying to look for charges. To... Yeah. You've also never had. Um any criminal record before this is completely out of the blue this coincides with a bit of x um, this has caused you harm and loss so um, what I would do if I was you I would put in a counterclaim and um, I would use the um, um, the Crimes Act 1961 um, section 115 oh, yes, I'm, I'm... I just watched that last night and I'm trying to get the paperwork sorted for that. Yeah, um, because... Um, so basically, my last video about um, conspiring to bring false accusations um, to an innocent party, um, you could basically follow that last video, like the instructions on how to set up your paperwork. You know, you don't need to be fancy, it can be brief. Um, you'd put yourself as the um, plaintiff and you'd put the New Zealand Police um, um, Corporation as the plaintiff, uh, as the defendant number one, and then you'd put the police prosecutor or whoever's bringing the charges against you as um, the defendant number two because, it, you know, he would he's the, the, the man or the woman who... Um, police officer who thought it was a good idea to go through with this you know knowing full well they're just you know they're, yeah, they're just trying to do it. yeah they 
They're kind of like scavengers, mate, like seagulls, just trying to get in for a, like a cheap feed. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of the time ex-girlfriends are just there with the bread feeding the seagulls and then, you know, next minute you've got bread all over you and you're getting attacked by seagulls. <laughs> The yeah, scavengers. On the search warrant, nobody's even signed it. They've just put a number three four one six where it says judge authorized issuing officer. They okay. just put a number three one uh, three four one six. Okay, so um, only a person can bring a charge in a court. A corporation can't bring a charge in a court. So um, they have to identify themselves. So when you get full disclosure from the police, so you'll be requesting full disclosure from the police prosecutor. Um, the details will be in there. Okay. okay, and then you'll know who to address the um, um, your counterclaim against. And then you're going to use inherent customary rights, um, and then you're going to use um, the te papa rahi or te raki um, waitangi claim, and um, you'll put that as a reference so that um, the judge has to uphold the other judge, which is Craig Coxhead, Judge Craig Coxhead, um, decision on the Waitangi tri uh, Tribunal, um, 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 the yeah, the findings, because the courts, just like the police, just like the Ministry of Education, just like every single government department, has to uphold the terms and conditions of Te Tiriti or Waitangi. Now, a lot of people um, scoff and go, oh, they don't listen to the Waitangi tribunals. But actually, they are bound by the 19... 75 Te Tiriti Waitangi Act, okay, and so that's incorporated into their statute, and every judge has to uphold statute. So the Act binds the Crown, the statute binds the judge, and you, you um, um, by applying the particular Act and the evidence and your claim of right, um, and then <clears throat> by applying those things on paper form. The judge can see it, he's bound by it, <clears throat> um, and then you will win. Um, the police will probably act a little bit shocked when you win because they're so accustomed to them winning all the time and then pulling the sneaky over unsuspecting um, Polynesians. Yeah. And um, they use the force of law, so you're outnumbered. So, you know, you've got you as just you know a pretty humble man never committed a crime before in your life and then they've come taken all your fucking property um caused harm and loss um created this situation of emotional harm because now you can't see your child and like they didn't use any discretion because if she has a history of doing this but you don't have a history of any crime then where is the discretion? Where are they upholding Te Tiriti te or Waitangi? If they keep doing this to us, there's going to be a lot of pissed off Polynesians that are going to go up to Waitangi and stop the commercial contracts from happening. And then there will be no New Zealand police. And there will yeah, be well, no... The lawyers um, have just taken her side. She didn't even have to sign her affidavit and I've got record of her filing multiple false reports. I let the first couple go under my customary and inherent rights to give her the chance to um you know make up for what she did i've been arrested three times in jail with no charges every single time so i let the first couple go but now i'm not allowed i haven't talked to my two little girls for months and i'm not allowed contact i'm not allowed communication and i just found out that she's got to take my kids to my family down the line and try and use it for my family to side with her yeah so it's up to you whether you want to put her on those like as a defendant number three for what she's done but being the mother of the child or the children i probably wouldn't do that because it's not going to be looked upon kindly yeah, she didn't even put me on the birth certificate when she had my babies i only found out when i went to hospital last year took her that i'm not i've got no rights to my children no, you do have rights. You do have rights. Well, they're ignoring me because I wasn't allowed to get the hospital record of all the, of the harm she's caused them. They go, you've got no rights. You're not on the papers. 
Yeah, so um, you still have rights. Don't worry. It's okay. You still have rights. But in their system, they've um, stacked everything up against you. In our system, um, we can help you work through that. But that would be a separate thing. Let's concentrate yeah. on th these things. So um, did it, did that make any sense, like, when I just explained it to you? or? Oh, yeah, it's hard for me to face because I've been there at every single event, every single celebration with my children, and this is the first time I've been deprived of any contact over Christmas, New Year's, and their birthdays are coming up. I can't even talk to them. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to, um, at that, um, when you write up your... Um, counterclaim um, you're going to put in you're going to list the harm and loss caused by everyone involved to yeah. you because when somebody has caused another person harm and loss um, the courts are bound under common law to um, um, to um, organize a remedy for the victim and so you're clearly the victim in this situation you haven't caused her any harm and loss yeah. okay so um i would imagine that once if if you keep the paperwork fairly clean and like um quite simple one to two pages um and put your evidence in there put your statutes in there put the waitangi claim in there um I imagine that this is going to go away and um, no one's really going to perpetuate anything and um, it's going to go away. But if you don't do anything now and nip it in the bud before it flourishes into a whole lifetime of like misery, then um, it's not going to go away and it's just going to get worse. Yeah. And it's a shame that it's gotten to this point before you realised the snake in the grass. I, I let the first thing go because, you know, you give them the chance to reprieve for their actions, but this is the third time I was incarcerated and every single time I've never had a chance, but I've been physically harmed, I've been emotionally torn, Okay. I've just had enough. You can actually use inherent customary rights as the Māori father because it is the fathers who took care of the babies. That's yeah. that They're the kaitiaki. And yeah. um, um, there was a case in America where um, a Brazilian or an American mum came here and had babies to um, a Māori and then she stole the kids and went back to the USA and he went over to California and went into the courts, the family courts. The judge took one look at his, you know, um, details that he was Māori and she granted him custody under kaitiaki rights as the male of the of the whanau, as the yeah, father. That's awesome. Yeah, and even in our in my custom, um, like Hini Kurako is my nana, and she like the famous story is that she would just you know she was a tanifa and then she just left her um, child with the father, the human father. You know, yeah. very reptilian. <laughs> you know, the woman of very reptilian age just leave it with the dad. Eh? And the and the fathers had to raise the kids, and that's like a strong trait in my in my family. The yeah. women are kind of yeah, the bearers and the and the bossy ones, and then the men end up having to do all the like um the family mahi. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I submitted um and. Um, um, some information on our embassy and it was signed by Peter in 2018 and the lawyer said that she inquired and we have no jurisdiction in Aotearoa. She goes, the, the government is the sole jurisdiction oh. and I said, no, we're not part of Aotearoa. Oh, we are saying, part of Aotearoa, you know, like... Um, oh, when... Peter said we're going under um, the Pacific. Yeah, Te Moana Nui Akua. And yeah, yeah, not Aotearoa. They have jurisdiction over Aotearoa, but they don't have jurisdiction over the Pacific, which we come under. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Aotearoa is another nickname like New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, that's why he said we're not Aotearoa, we're Te Moana Nui Akua. Yeah. yeah, and we're, 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 the, the complete set is Te Waka Maui, Te Panga o Te Ika Maui, uh, and then yeah. Te Ika Maui, and then Te Moana Nui Akua. Now that's the complete set. 
So um, 2,000 years or 200 years AD, so after Jesus died, like 2,000 years prior, roughly, um, Maui, the great navigator from Egypt, he came over and, you know, named yeah. Te Waka Maui, Te Panga o Te Ika Maui and Te Ika Maui, and then went around the Pacific and there was Libyan script found in Chile that yeah. he was there like two, 200 years after Jesus had died and he had claimed, you know, like, so, you know, where's Aotearoa? What, up in the cloud? Microsoft? <laughs> hey, hey, just going to Microsoft my way up to the bit chain like every other, you know. I'm like, are you guys for real? I'm like, stay on to Ika Maui, to Waka Maui. They're the sacred fish of Maui, the realms, sacred yeah. waka of Maui, like the sacred realms, like the celestial, sacred, like, yeah, well, holy well, sea. Was telling me is, um, my Pukai lineage was direct descendants of Maui. Yeah. Yeah, he said we're direct descendants of Maui. Well, yeah, because my marae is kahura naki. And um, yeah. so is that Pokai? Oh, yeah, yeah, so Tamati of Pokai Whenua. Or yeah, yeah, we're yeah, from he's, um, he's my, Naitirangi Nui. And... Yeah, he's my granddad too. So I'm Naitirangi Koyanaki and um, um, Tamati of Araki Nui, the captain of Tam, Tiki, uh, Takitimu, which was also the sacred walker of gods, is my granddad. And then Hani Korako, my nana, was the um, the Tanifa who led um, Takitimu walker from Hawaii to Awanui and Tauranga and you yeah, know, yeah, that's what my father was getting deep into before he passed, and he was just giving me the briefs, and it really got my think thinking to say we're part of you know the person that fished up. You know, yeah, and that goes back to the stars. So the the sacred fish, it's it's the, all the star celestial star, like you know, like the Southern Cross. That's the Te Ika Maui. Yeah, it's the same shape. It's the fish, you know, um, and so there's like um, there's some really like God's law styled holy sea celestial like um ancestry going on with us and when people say Aotearoa I'm like well where is that because it Aotearoa isn't Te Waka Maui yeah that's just um, it, the Maori name for the New Zealand that they've named it but it's not even New Zealand because New Zealand isn't Te Ika Maui and Te Waka Maui New Zealand is the birth certificate in the corporation yeah so um we've got to kind of um, and I think it was purposely done. You know how Te Iko Maui has always been Te Iko Maui, but then they had Te Wai Ponamu and then Aotearoa. Like there's all these mishmashes of um, geographical names for the islands, but the complete set is Te Waka Maui, Te Iko Maui, and Te Panga o Te Iko Maui. So you can't deny the complete set. It's like Monopoly. I mean, if you only had. Um, one of the three. Yeah, one of the three, eh? But we've got, like, the whole... It's like a game of Monopoly, I tell you. I tell you now. But anyway, so does that make sense, or have I just confused the issue? No, no, I understand that I'm deep into our um, customary and inherent stuff. Yeah, well, you're my cousin, then. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, under that... Um, you know, under that lineage, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so... Ka Kahanunu is cousins with Napui. Um, we're cousins with the Tauranga area. And um, yeah, we're all just bloody cousins, mate. Big family. <laughs> yeah, and the clues are in the hapu. So, yep. and, the, and the wakas were like a, um, um, kind of like a, um, a grading system almost. Like, te, Takitimu waka was the highest. Yeah. And, um, so there was a hierarchy system and you've got to wonder why did Maui, when he found Te Waka Maui, go straight to Wairua River and go straight up to Te Reina? You know, because, and then why did ta Tamatea um, Araki Nui go into Awanui up north and then Tauranga and then send Takitimu Waka up to the Wairua River? Because in those times, like 13, uh, 700 years ago, 1300 years ago, and over 2000 years ago, 
they knew where to go to meet the royalty. Yeah. Now, there was no story of them going into, like, um, other areas who claimed to be the royalty. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, they went to specific areas. Yeah, so the geographic mappings and the navigation is really, really vital for us to match up our true histories with the hapu names because our whanos, all our nannies and all that, all had like three, four names. <laughs> you know, they're all swapping names like every generation, new last name, but the hapu stays the same. Yeah. And the hapu is like the postal code or the um, hapu territory. And then, and the good thing is too, um, I protected my children, my two babies too, I registered under our, um, under the Wakamina or Hapu. Oh yeah, yeah, good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so if they yep. can't try and de deprive me of that, they're part of me and, yeah, they you know, can't. my lineage too. They can't, because just like that case in California, um, the judge internationally recognised the Māori fathers as being the kaitiaki of the tamariki. That's yeah. awesome to know. Yeah, so stay in there, have some faith. Now, my paperwork is a lot easier to understand. It, like, I can I can help you set up something and then, uh, or I might just do a video on how to set it up. It's nice and clean and simple. Yeah, I watch all, all the videos and keep up to date with everything and yeah. It's kind of weird how it's kind of morphed into this. Like every time I do a video, and I think I've, I, I'm like, oh yeah, people are going to get that. It just actually creates more questions, and then I end up having to do another video just to answer the last video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm never going to stop. This is just going to go on forever. I just videos for the rest of my life. Hey, <laughs> right. anyway, so um, I'm going to go. I'll make a video. I'll pop it up. And I'm going to head into town. I'm not going to do cards until tomorrow, so I'm going to have the day off. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to do all these, this paperwork today so I can get it all filed and sent through tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And have fun with it. Don't feel disheartened. Things will come right. You call us anytime. Will do. Okay, thank you for awesome. that. Thank you, Monica. Bye. Bye.